New York City is the greatest city in the world. Culturally rich, ethnically diverse, it is a true melting pot where traditions and trends are created. People move here from all over the world to follow their dreams. From the tip of Staten Island to the top of the Bronx and everywhere in between, you will find entrepreneurs on every street corner. These are their New York stories. My name is Carmen Rodriguez and I'm the CEO of Brooklyn Cupcake. What differentiates us is the fact that we carry these Latin and Italian gourmet cupcakes. And this is my New York story. So Carmen, I'm very excited to be here. So happy to be here After with you After everything too. we've talked about, I had not been here. It's amazing. It's actually, been, honestly, I think you're very humble. No, no, really. You. you really were. Very, yes. I mean, this is extraordinary. Oh, and you. just, you know, your whole journey to being a kid in the neighborhood, right? That's Growing correct. up, yeah. no, exactly. four or five, just a few blocks, few blocks down here. the street, yeah. to being here today, the experiences that you shared with me in one day being in what one might, you know, feels a secure environment, right. with a job, having kids, being married, being part of a family, to saying, I don't have a job. Right. What am I going to do? Right. How am I going to take care? I mean, I'm getting and, and, actually. And I'm 45. So at 45, what are you doing, right? Reinventing the wheel, I mean. But I was so fortunate to receive what I call an outpouring of support from my community. Once they heard that I was unemployed, I started receiving phone calls at home because people knew that I had this passion for baking. Mm -hmm. They had my cupcakes before. And everybody said to me, Carmen, if there's any way at all possible, maybe you should consider this as an option because back then, which was about 2011, the cupcakes were hot. You mm -hmm. know, the sex mm -hmm. in the city, the crumbs, the whole thing. Right. And, and so I was like, okay. But honestly, I didn't have anything, anything saved up. So when this all happened, were you scared? Did you like just say for weeks on end, how could this happen to me? This is not like what's supposed to happen. I was a good worker. Like, take yeah. me through. Oh, that you know, day? Like, that day for yeah, me? Yeah, I'm just kind of <laughs> curious. Because it's, it's, it's a very traumatic, emotional it is. journey that somebody yes. goes through. And it's like, it throws you off. So how do you get back on in saying, I can continue? I, you know, it was, it was it, honestly, it was devastating because any employer will tell you that Carmen gives 110% of herself. I didn't see this coming at all. What I hadn't known, honestly, is that they had done a huge layoff. So they had already fired about 30 people, and I was next, mm -hmm. right? And I was brought into this room, and I was told, this breaks our heart or whatever, but we have to let you go. The company's going through hard times, and... Um, because they were hard yes, times at that they time. Were hard I mean, this was, you know, the trough absolutely. of the market. But I had done so much to help them. Right. Uh, How it, could it be me? Right. How could it be me? How could it exactly. be me? I've given everything. Exactly. Exactly. And then it even feels kind of funny because when you're let go of, then you're kind of like told, all right, well, you can go downstairs and collect your things and we'll walk you out through the back door or something like that. And you're like, <gasps> Oh, that only happens my. in movies, right? Right, 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 right. I'm a good employee. Yes, exactly. So I went home. I was devastated. It was October. The economy was bad, if you remember. Mm -hmm. Things were things were rough. And my mother had lost her job. Uh, an aunt had lost their job. Uh, so many people just in my immediate family were affected by this. It was devastating. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, now we're going to be forced to go back into the market, compete with younger people mm -hmm. who are now mm -hmm. educated, or, you know, even though I've got the work experience, how am I going to do this? And different skill sets as, as the marketplace has yes, changed. That's correct. Absolutely. I was looking on the internet, uh, agencies, whatever it was that I could do to try and get resituated back into the workforce. But then, but then, but then. So what happens is it's October, right? And then in November, I get a few phone calls from people in the community that are looking to support me in a way with my little skill set mm -hmm. here. And this and is- And your passion. And my passion, correct. And this is Thanksgiving now. And But what happens is now it's, it's weddings, it's, it's birthday parties, baby showers, things like that. But in December, I get a phone call from a church 
and the church places an order for 1,000 cupcakes. You never told me that oh, story. Oh, yes, 1,000 cupcakes. And then, that's December 15th, okay? I'll never forget. <laughs> then they call me back up and they say, can you produce another 1,500 cupcakes for New Year's Eve, because we want to celebrate with the congregation. Wow. And that really was me saying, God, are you trying to speak to me? You know what I mean? <laughs> you know yes, what I mean? Yes, absolutely. So, so I was like, oh, okay. So a, an order for a thousand cupcakes, cupcakes on December 15th and then 1,500. 1500. Mm -hmm. Now, you are, you've been baking locally, you've been baking yes. for your family. Right. This is like a whole different whole scale. Nother. Oh, yeah. How did you know, like, mm -hmm. just even like, how do you have the room? I mean, it's not like you oh, have. Oh no! I what make do you a. Do? I call my sister immediately. I call my cousin immediately. I call the husband in. Everybody's in. Everybody's in. We're gonna do this. We're gonna get this done. You what? No sleep. It was no a whatever, family affair. Whatever. Yep, it was a family affair. Mm -hmm. I love this. Yes. Okay. It was. It was. It was so was it exhilarating? It was, for yes. You? That was. That was. That was the spark. And then all of a sudden, it left me with, could this really be? You know, as we mm -hmm. move forward. I start getting phone calls from people, head chefs of like Deutsche Bank and people like that. And I'm like, oh, this is really, this is really kind of happening, right? right? Yeah. Did you start assigning jobs to different family members to do, you're smiling. You did, what, what? <laughs> well, really what happened was, mom walked in at one point, this is my home, very humble, small kind of one bedroom apartment. And there were cupcakes all over and so as crazy as it was because i cannot begin to tell you that there was nothing i'm unemployed there's nothing in the bank account you know what well, i mean this is what I, thank yes. you for bringing coming back because yes. this is what i'm thinking as you said earlier that you didn't have anything in right. the bank right to start right so how did you do it i mean friends and family there's a couple of things i did hear that there could be money for women wanting to start business or minority businesses or things like that. So quickly I kind of start thinking and putting together a business plan and uh, I how had... How did you know how to write a business plan? You know, it's the wonderful world of computers yes, these yes, days. Yes. You know, it, so the you samples are out there. Okay, yes, exactly. So, so I went online. Small? Yes, exactly. And we created something. I drafted my sister, my partner, mm -hmm. and I said, come on, let's go. And we started hitting these agencies. and. I am grateful because when we had the meeting, the agency said to me, you can get your finances from a couple of places, from a bank, from a VC, from friends and family. And then he went back and he said, but a bank's not going to give you a loan. VC may not be interested right now because you're a startup. And oh, that only leaves you with friends and family. And I looked at him and I said, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm out the door now. That's it. Don't, let's not waste any more time trying to do this. Let's go back home. So this meeting didn't go so well. We go home, and my mom goes down to the basement to go and get something. And she comes up, and um, she's got her checkbook in her hand. And she writes out a check for $40,000. And she says, this is all that I have. She says, this was to bury me, but I can't take it with me. So you girls use it and do what you've got to do. And like I said, the family was suffering at the time because of the lack of work. <laughs> and so that was the start. It wasn't enough, but we were so fortunate because we found this place, right? This landlord charged me a month rent, a month security, gave me four or five months to build this place out. Like, it's unheard of. Today, if you go to get a retail space, they could ask you, yeah. I heard such ridiculous things, you wouldn't even believe it. So the landlord was so kind. He, you know, had heard the dream and everything and thought, and this, this had been sitting abandoned for 20 years. 20 years? 20 years. I hear great stories of people coming back saying, this used to be my apartment, or it was once this, or it was once that. Well, because it's hard to imagine, just given where Williamsburg is today, yeah. And it's just right. I mean, exactly. And 2011, you yes. know, was not that long ago. It was right. five years no, ago. You're absolutely right. And in July 2011, we opened our doors, oh and then it was, it was 
only something you could dream about because while we were preparing the business plan, there were many things that were running through our head. For instance, the Barclays Center was mm -hmm. under construction, That's right? right. That's and right. we were like, wow, what if we could get into the Barclays Center? Then we would really be Brooklyn's cupcake, yes, right? Yes. And so it was on the wish list, right? Six months after opening, they had the product, yes. they gave us a call, and we were in. Amazing. I love it. So that was like the first thing of many things to come. And that feel like a pivotal oh, point. Oh, yeah. Like if, if this is, if we're selling here, right. we're distributing, then kind of the sky's the limit? Kind of. Then Daily News comes out, and this is great because this isn't, we don't even know about this. A fan who happened to have our telephone number Texas us and says, you guys are in the Daily News, voted the number one cupcake in New York City. Right. No way. So that was like, oh my God, we did it. You know what I mean? That was, and then Zagat. You didn't even know. No, no, didn't even know. Holy no, cow. No, no. Then Zagat rated us a 27 out of 30. And now we were getting a reputation for this product. But this is in such an incredibly short period of time. Right? It was. I mean, yeah. think about it from when you opened the doors in July of 2011 mm -hmm. to breaking into Barclays to being in Zagat's, et cetera. Mm -hmm. We're talking a span of less than a year? That's correct. Yes. So, Carmen, there is so much competition. Not, I mean, bakeries, sweets, cupcakes. How do you think that you've kind of cut through that? and really been able to create a distinct, different brand? It was very interesting because being of Italian and Puerto Rican descent, it was only natural for us to come up with these flavors. Believe it or not, it wasn't until the fans brought it to my attention that I was filling a void in the community. Oh, so because they're so Because we were served, right, this community once was Latins and Italians mm. coexisting. Okay. Okay. And so back in the days, there was a small bakery, and probably it's still around, absolutely, called Valencia. That was oh, like sure. there was no yeah, birthday yeah, yeah, party yeah, yeah. going to take place in a Latin household without a Valencia cake, yes. right? And the community started coming in and saying, thank you for coming to the neighborhood and giving us back our culture to celebrate with. Mm. And I was like, Oh, we did that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, we did that? And it was just... So it was like organic, it actually. Was. The way Absolutely. that you created your product line yes. and developed flavors yes. was just like a natural extension of yourself yes. versus that you methodically said, okay, well, I have to differentiate my product line. Yes. This is how I'm going to do the it. The only thing that I will tell you, though, is out, we don't do buttercream. We actually do cream cheese frosting or whipped cream mascarpone or chocolate ganache or real peanut butter, depending on what mm -hmm. it is. And that also helped to set us apart. My mom said to me, Carmen, but how could you exclude buttercream? And I said, Mom, I'm not going to play in a sandbox that I'm unfamiliar with, especially today with Yelp and all of these, because bad reviews are no good, right? No, no. So stick to something that you're good at and passionate. Stick and to your right. core. Stick to your core. Stick to what you know. And it'll pan out for you if it, you know, if that's really. Right, that's where your exactly. comfort zone is. It's something you know, you know how to use the materials, yes. it's something and you've that experimented. And that itself paid off. Well, we are going to absolutely, you, you and me, girl, are going to stay in touch. We've been in touch for a while. Yes. And I cannot You've thank you wonderful. enough. You're awesome. Thank you. Oh, thank you so mm. much for this time. I am so happy for you guys, honestly. Get more Cranes in print and online with Cranes New York Business, our flagship title, and Cranes Five Boroughs, a new lifestyle magazine and website covering the five boroughs of New York City.